Hey everyone, welcome to the Kentico Rocks podcast, the podcast about everything Kentico, Kentico Content, .NET, Microsoft, and Azure. This is your host, Brian McKeever, and believe it or not, this is actually episode number 28 of the Kentico Rocks podcast. And today I'm pretty thrilled to be joined by one of the newest MVPs in the Kentico world, Sean Wright. Hi Sean, how are you doing today? I'm doing great, how are you? I'm doing fantastic, thank you. I definitely appreciate you joining uh, the episode or the show today. I think we're going to talk about some pretty cool things that are happening in the Kentico world and probably hit the latest about the Kentico 2020 project since now actually 2020. And talk a little bit about you, Sean. I, I, my plan is to let the listeners know all about you, how you became an MVP, what you're up to these days, what you love to do, maybe what you want to do the rest of the year, and uh, go from there. And then we'll, we'll hit uh, the milestone that just happened, which is actually Beta 2 came out last week for Kentico EMS. Very exciting. I know we've both had a chance to play around with that, but uh, first question, I'm going to try to throw a curveball at you. What's one notable thing about you, Sean, that people may not know? Hmm. That's probably a tough question to answer because I'm pretty much an open book. I don't know. Maybe people uh, that don't work with me or family members would know that I am a type 1 diabetic. Okay. You know what? I can respect that. We actually have one of those on staff here at Bistream as well. So I, I kind of get it. I've kind of learned a lot. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. Well, good. See, I will do the same thing. I'll, something that listeners may not know about me is I actually, I was going to go with the CrossFit angle, but everybody kind of knows that. I do like the CrossFit. So I was in the Ultimate Frisbee Club in college because I love playing Ultimate Frisbee. We'll go with that as an unknown, hopefully. That's a good one. Yeah, yeah. But anyways, so you and I have known each other for kind of a short time, really the last year or so. We've kind of got to know each other. We got to visit Kentico Connections together last fall. That was fun. Yep, uh, great conference. And uh, so actually, now that we can get to the Kentico part of the interview, I'm, I'm curious. Tell me, when did you first start using Kentico? That would have been in 2013. Um, I work for a web development agency named Wired Views based in Chicago Falls, Ohio, maybe 30 minutes south of Cleveland. When I was hired here, they told me they use a, something called Kentico. Never heard of it before, um, but they said they would teach me about it and how to use it. And when I joined on, I believe Kentico 7 was the new hot thing coming out, and that's what I cut my teeth on. However, <laughs> Kentico uh, 7. yeah, it's a, it a classic <laughs> one. Um, we, as a company, yep. have been developing on Kentico since 1.4 or 1.3. So pretty early on, we jumped on the Kentico bandwagon, and uh, we've been riding that train since. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah, Kentico 7, those were the days. I'm really glad that we didn't have to touch those days much any longer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and so as you were learning the system and the platform, uh, one of the things that kind of you know, caught my attention as someone from a, a different state in, in the U.S. is uh, all of a sudden we started seeing you on – Kentico blogs and being referenced on social media like Twitter. And I'm kind of curious, like what, what got you excited enough about Kentico to start blogging about it? Yeah, that's a good question. I think even though I worked with Kentico in Kentico 7, Kentico 8, and the web forms technology really never made any sense to me. It didn't yeah. click. And um, when I started learning .NET and C Sharp, NBC had already come out. So that's kind of what I knew. And that paradigm, that technology made sense to me. And so having to go back to web forms and try to unlearn a little bit, um, it, it never quite clicked. And then when uh, Kentico announced MVC as a fully supported development technology for Kentico 12, I got really excited. And I just dove into the docs and started working with the demo sites and testing everything out and trying to get a feel for how is this going to change Kentico as a development experience for me? And would this be something I enjoyed? And I really enjoyed it from the, the first time that I installed the um, Kentico 12 and started messing around with it. Uh, so in that, I had picked up a lot of software development practices, doing a lot of non-Kentico development um, architecture for large APIs and I did some Sitecore stuff, and I wanted to bring some of those development best practices to Kentico now that I was going to be working with a platform and a technology that clicked with me with doing MVC. 
And I thought, you know what, I'm, I'm just going to start writing about this stuff and see if anyone is interested in it. Um, and I just enjoyed the process of writing and it helped me learn. And I just wanted to keep doing that. And so that's how I ended up writing a 20 series uh, blog post series about Kentico design patterns. Just kind of kept going. Yeah, and I want to I want to thank you for that time and effort that you put into that because it's really really good content. I mean, when you put out a new post, and in fact, I think I did this this week. I actually shared it with our internal company Slack, and they're making comments about like, oh yeah, this is this is really good stuff. So thank you for that. And you know, as someone who's been blogging about Kentico for a while myself, I know it's not easy to hit the every Monday ish timeframes that you've been doing, and I think you're doing a great job of that. So keep yeah, it up because people are reading and I know I've gotten comments from other developers in the Kentico Slack community and you know everyone's excited and happy to have you on board because I think you're really doing a good job of demystifying what does it mean to do really high quality MVC development on Kentico because a lot of partners and developers out there they they did have that web forms background with the portal engine and they're still coming to us today with well, how do I move? What are the first few steps? And and I think some of your blog posts go a long way to that point. Yeah, that's uh, I think that's definitely a goal of mine. Um, a lot of my posts probably target intermediate to advanced developers, but not necessarily intermediate to advanced Kentico developers. Mm -hmm. So if uh, developers are coming into Kentico as a platform, maybe because their agency decided to start supporting it, or they work at a business that bought a Kentico license and now they need to maintain or build a site, uh, but they have some maybe .NET or C-sharp background, I want to provide some resources for them. And then also I recognize that a lot of developers are coming from web forms and there's a very different way of doing things in MVC. And because I know both worlds but feel much more comfortable in the MVC, it uh, isn't too difficult for me to break down some of those concepts uh, and things that we can do now in MVC that we couldn't necessarily do, or at least easily in web forms like unit testing. Um, mm -hmm. these, these types of things, I, I want to put stuff out there that maybe seasoned uh, Kentico portal engine developers who are great .NET C sharp, understand architectural patterns, but maybe just not the MVC way of doing things, or at least what MVC enables. I want to make resources out there for them. Um, and I, another thing is I, I would love for Kentico to be seen as the .NET CMS platform or just a CMS platform where high bars of architectural excellence is the standard. And so yep. people go and search for Kentico. It's not like searching for you know, some other CMS platforms where you, you search for answers. And someone's like, oh, just add this little line of code and it fixes everything. But you have no idea what it does. And maybe it's actually a really bad idea. Um, I want Kentico to, to be perceived differently. And developers love when a technology they're using has great support, great community, good advice, you know, people that are putting great answers out there that make sense and work well for them. I want people from outside to see Kentico that way. And hopefully that will um, help Kentico grow, especially with some of the new stuff that's coming down the road. Yeah, I couldn't agree more in, in the passion of their shows. And, and honestly, I can tell you, it, people are interested. I, I watched your session at Kentico Connection, as we mentioned earlier, last fall. And every time that you put up a, hey, here's a one way to do things, but here's maybe a better way. And then here's the, a code sample. Everyone in the audience was taking pictures with their phones. It was really cool to see, actually. And I think you know everyone was excited because that's, I agree, most developers want that. They want to have quality code. They want to know how to do this the right way. And it's awesome that you're part of our um, evangelist group for Kentico that's passionate about Kentico, making it the best in the world, because I think it can be there. Um, but actually, you just mentioned something that, that rang a bell. You talked about ha being a resource or having a resource to go to. I saw earlier this week, I think it was, that you put out a new resource. Maybe tell our listeners about what, what they could learn from that new resource you put out this week. Yeah, that's uh, uh, something that definitely came from the heart for me. Uh, so when I was trying to learn Kentico, I didn't know where to go. I knew Kentico had docs, but I didn't know where do I go for Kentico information? Where, do, where are the best resources? Um, where can I, you know, I'm going to type something to Google and I'm going to get something back. Is that a, a, where I should be looking? Is that a good search result? I didn't know anything. 
Um, and just being in the community long enough and making connections with people, I've realized there's a very you know, well-defined, easy pick collection of places that you can go to learn about Kentico from a software developer standpoint. And so just this last week, I put together a list, um, which anyone can go see now on GitHub. If you go to github.com forward slash Kentico forward slash home, uh, that'll take you to Kentico's main GitHub repository for all their open source stuff. And there's a resources markdown file in that repository. And you can click on that and you can see a, a huge list of all the social media um, uh, places that you can follow Kentico or Kentico employees, um, all the blogs of all the MVPs, blogs of partners, um, other GitHub repositories that have Kentico information. Uh, so I'm just trying to make that a place where anyone can make a pull request, add some information if they think it will help other people, and we can point everyone there. And so all the developers coming into Kentico, or maybe ones that have been in it a long time but don't know about all these resources, they can go there, they can find these things, and they can feel empowered in the work that they have to do. Yeah, I think it's great. I reviewed the list. I mean, it's really nice. It's broken out by category. So if you're looking for like a blog or you're looking for answers, you can go here, you can go there. It's, and it's all in that one markdown file. And it makes it easy to view because you're you know, probably at GitHub already as a developer. And I yep. think it's really good. And I actually think that someone has actually made a PR for it already to add in a few more blogs. So if you're out there and you're listening, and you want your blog mentioned, or you want your company's blog, and they, it is focused on Kentico, and it provides value, make a PR. And who knows, Sean can maybe get it in the list. Yeah, and that's not just for Kentico EMS. It's also for Kentico content. Um, it's really yeah. anything in the Kentico world uh, that's going to be the place where you can get maybe not the definitive list, but a really good one of where to branch out. Which is it's interesting because we always – kind of hear that from people when we get to some of the annual events that Kentico has about, well, where should I go to look for this help? And, you know, you've got your normal places. You've got DevNet that Kentico has linked on their blog as the developer starting point. You've got uh, Stack Overflow, which is linked to DevNet. So if you ask a question in one place or the other, they, they come together. But there's also the Slack community group for Kentico. So I don't know. Not everyone knows about that. And it's a group that as long as you ask someone who's a part of it, they can get you right in. And that's a place that I know, Sean, you're active very much. And so I try to be a little bit and so are the other MVPs. So there are lots of places. And that's why I think the GitHub resource is nice because it spells all that out and how to get to it. Um, and actually, uh, I think we should transition to another big thing that's going on right now in the community. Uh, and that is that the Kentico EMS team has launched the second beta of Kentico 2020 as of about a week ago or so. Yep, and that's super exciting. It's so cool. Yes. Yes. It, they've done a good job. It's exciting to see the roadmap come to fruition with the actual biggest, in my opinion, the biggest thing that's in there is the ability to have .NET standard packages that represent the Kentico libraries, and that's the way you can create your MVC site and have it uh, tie to the admin tool. If you're familiar with the MVC development style, you actually have the admin tool plus the, the actual live site. And previously, we had to really rely on MVC 5 as the technology that we were doing for that. But now with this second beta, it's, you know, you can't run into production yet, of course, but this is the first real time that you can kind of open up to the latest and greatest technology of, of, of .NET Core sites, or maybe even something like Blazor, if you want to give that a shot and connect that to Kentico as well. And I know, Sean, you've got some experience with that as like, I saw a screenshot, I don't even, it was like the second day after the beta was released of, Something very interesting. So tell everyone, what, what have you been doing with the, with that new beta? Yeah, so <laughs> I, there, there's a question that I asked in DevNet five years ago when um, <laughs> dot, dot .NET vNext, the ASP.NET vNext, or yeah. at the time I think it was called DNX or K or, you know, it's gone through so many iterations. I asked right. him to go, when are we going to be able to develop with this? Because this is the hottest, coolest, most exciting stuff. And there was a response saying, we're going to look at it, we're going to evaluate it, and when it feels mature, we're going to adopt it. And now five years later, I got to go home, got to open up the beta, start a site, and see if that was, you know, my dreams were finally going to come true. And I can <laughs> see Kentico content being pulled from the uh, 
the, the management side and displayed in the ASP.NET Core application, and it worked. It, it worked right out of the box. And it was extremely uh, fulfilling, and I felt, you know, all right, we're finally here. You know, this is five years in the making, and I'm so glad that we can finally do this. And tell me a little bit, like, what was the setup process? So if you if you want to try this, if you're if you're new to the beta, and you're not sure, walk walk us through what were the first few steps you had to do to get that set up. Yeah. So um, going through the beta, you, you do the standard stuff where Kentico is going to give you a um, a CMS project, which is the web forms classic web forms .NET full framework application, and you're going to use that to manage all your content. And I had it seed the CMS with the dancing goat content. So that I'd have something there and I wouldn't have to go and create all my new page types and whatever. I want some content there. I didn't want to worry about that part. But then for the um, content delivery side, the, the live site part of the application, I use the .NET CLI. And I w I've been using it for a couple of years now to manage our internal libraries, which are all .NET standard. So I'm very familiar with the CLI. I like using it. I went to the CLI.NET new and made a new MVC application, an empty one, and it created a, uh, a new project, ASP.NET Core 3.0. And then in the Kentico um, documentation for the beta, there's a doc, a PDF for if you want to integrate into ASP.NET Core. And there's just a couple lines you need to add. It's, uh, it really is just a handful of lines. Yep. And once you have those in there, then you can start um, querying data out of the database using the classic page type providers and document helper um, APIs that we're all familiar with doing uh, previous EMS development. I made some calls to those in a controller, mapped the data to a view model, and presented it with Razor, now all running in ASP.NET Core. And the page loaded up, and there's images, and there's content, and it's all shown there. So it really it couldn't have been easier. And of course, as Kentico adds um, more functionality on the .NET Core side, there's going to be more configuration we'll have to do to light up everything. But right. just to get content showing up, it really was not difficult at all. Yeah, and when you know, I, I did the same thing with a with a pet project as well. And the the neat thing is, I think you might have even mentioned it to me actually, is that you know, they're not just uh, jamming it in there. They're following the new architecture patterns of having like a proper middle middleware injection location for the context of the Kentco app that you need to have. They're using endpoint routing, which is the newer way in .NET Core 3 to do routing as opposed to the old, uh, what was it, like use MVC routing or something like that, which doesn't make sense as much now. So they're, they're really modernizing the overall solution for how the Kentico libraries interact with the live site, but yet they haven't made these like drastic changes to the underlying APIs. So Kentico developers will still be familiar with, like you mentioned, like object query or document query or, or membership context. Like that stuff is still going to be there, but yet it still is getting the benefit of like having the modern way of doing it in core. And I, I, I think Kentico is doing a good job because they can't, they couldn't like just make a drastic change, change every single thing in the world and drop it on us because it'd be like, oh my gosh, learning a new platform almost. Uh, but yet they're still doing enough of the finesse work to make it easy to basically bolt in Kensco to core. And I think, I don't know, do you think they're doing a good job too? Uh, yeah, I think it's a, a fantastic job. The I know that the work to convert all those libraries to .NET standard has been ongoing for a couple years now. And they finally gotten to the point where all that system.web stuff all that classic full framework .NET stuff is pulled out of those libraries, and so they will run in any context. They'll, they'll run in MVC5, they'll run in web forms, and they'll run in ASP.NET Core. And being able to balance that and, and design those in a way that it doesn't move the entire world for us. You know, our cheese hasn't gone anywhere. It's still in the same place, um, but it's much more enjoyable now. I think they're doing a great job with you know, integrating I'm into right. .NET Core and, yeah. I might literally go back and edit this file so that no one hears you mention you can do it in web forms. <laughs> <laughs> let's let's just pretend that's actually not an option, you know, because we don't want to confuse anyone. But no, I, I get what you're saying. I, yeah, I agree. It's it's awesome. So 
you know, as we kind of get towards wrapping things up a little bit, Sean, tell me, like, what is there anything uh, that's new, cool you're doing at your shop that you're proud of, or maybe a preview of what's upcoming in your blog post series that we can, people can look forward to? Um, yeah, so we're working on um, Kentico 12 and VC stuff here, and a lot of what we're doing ends up in some way or another being inspiration for a blog post, uh, problems we tackled or things that we've been thinking about uh, that ends up being you know, the, the starting point for what I'm going to write about. Um, and we've been doing a lot of heavy back-end stuff. Uh, and actually, now we're at the point with a project where we're looking more at some of the UI and um, widget functionality. And so I think the next couple blog posts in uh, yep. the design pattern series, they're going to maybe focus more on some of the best practices for widgets and integrating uh, those same you know, high standard quality design architecture with widgets and with inline editors and all that stuff. Um, I, I have a passion for front-end development. I, I was doing um, only Angular development for a couple of years. Okay. And so when I see the way that we can marry the, the client side stuff with the NDC stuff for widgets and inline editors, I think it's really cool. Um, and I think that there's ways to do that development where it treats both the front end and the back end as um, technologies and platforms that deserve good architecture and um, planning and all that stuff. So I think I, I'm planning on writing about some of them. Very cool. Yeah, and I agree. We're we're hitting in that area, especially since Kentucky 2020, in my opinion, is fixing something that they need to fix, which is the content in widgets on page builder is now really fully searchable, translatable, and respects workflow a little bit better. So yep. I'm happy to see that improvement in the widget system as well. And, and you're right, like a lot of the examples from Kentico in code and in documentation is all about kind of, here's a simple way to get it done. Um, but there are different ways for sure to create widgets. And we were doing a few different ideas last year that you know, I think we're still settling on exactly what is the absolute best way to do it. But who knows, you know, that's a relative thing, I guess, absolute best. Uh, I think that at the end of the day, it's, it opens up possibilities to have the widgets and inline property editors done in a way that makes sense to a new front-end developer. And I think that's what's exciting. It's not like this Kentico specific thing. It's what you, what you would just expect coming onto a modern web development pro uh, project team at this point. Yep, absolutely. That That area where the client side stuff interfaces with the back end stuff with widgets is in the documentation it's it's very big it's very heavy um, but in the widgets that i've been working on i try to keep that as thin as possible and the client side stuff almost looks like it wasn't for kentico there's some references here and there to things on the window that you can access those kentico apis to update values but besides that it's like a a rich client side widget um, component uh, almost looks like SPA code, like Angular Reactor right. View or something like that. And right. I think that if you have front-end developers on your team, that's the best way to do it, to make them feel comfortable working with that stuff and not so intimidated with the Razor and the back end and all the Kentico APIs and that stuff. Very cool, very cool. And actually, I, I can't wait to see that from you. And if uh, you're out there and you're wondering, well, where can I find Sean's blog posts at. Sean, where, where's, the, where's the best way for them to find them? Yeah, so um, I post at this point exclusively on uh, dev.to um, and post in all my Kentico blog series stuff on there. So you can go to dev.to forward slash Sean G. Wright. That's S-E-A-N-G-W-R-I-G-H-T. Um, you should be able to find all my blogs, my blog posts there. But you can also search for Kentico the tag Kentico on DevTO, and you'll be able to see blog posts from myself and the other Kentico MVPs who have been posting there as well or reposting stuff from their sites. Very cool, very cool. And if someone has a question for you on social media, what's the best way to get a hold of you that way? Yeah, so my, my Twitter username is um, Sean G. Wright. Of course, if you go to that resources document I mentioned uh, on Kentico's GitHub, there's links to all the MVPs, 
uh, Twitter accounts and Kentico employees that speak publicly about Kentico and the product developments, all of their Twitter accounts are on there. So everyone out there in the community should have no problem finding someone to reach out to and themselves getting involved in the, the community and being able to ask questions and contribute. Great. And if you are listening to this through the podcast, the show links at the bottom will have links to these things as well, as I always try to do with each episode of the Kentico Rocks podcast. But, you know, I think we're about our time, so I'm going to wrap it up here. Uh, lastly, I'll just say, Sean, um, welcome to the Kentico MVP group as well. It's wholeheartedly deserved. We're all excited to have you a part of it. And um, good job. Keep it up. We look forward to seeing more and more. But um, thank you very much for joining the show today. Yeah, thank you. All right. Everyone else, this has been Kentico Rocks, episode number 28. Until next time.